Hello and welcome back. I um, had a little break away, had a little bit of work done and I am now back able to stitch again at my work table. Um, so where I left off was the end of the snippet roll that I'd built, the original two pieces for the base. So I've decided to add on another piece. So basically I've added another section um so what i did was i unpicked everything at the side here and i went in and don't look at that stitching look at this one <laughs> and i just stitched the piece of this is a piece of calico i think um i just stitched that along a couple of rows two or three rows just to hold it in place um and then i added more of the um Oh, batik, the green batik that I'd used in the background um, to start with. And I've just, I tucked it underneath and the original piece of batik I've moved over. So everything's folded to the right on the front of the snippet roll, just to keep it in place. So now what, what people had been asking about was how I did the the colours in the background with the, the voils and the fabrics that are used in the background. So it's very easy and I know a lot of people have shown this. Um, mine started off, I think, oh no, it's a little bit further down. I'll start at the beginning. I've got a little bit of oil down here and I've embroidered onto it because I wanted a little more colour in the background. I didn't want the stitching to disappear into the batik fabric. So I'll roll as I go and then it's neat and tidy. So I've got sari silk in the background, got lots of bits and pieces of lace, lace flowers big lace pieces um, that's gifted from a friend. Um, I worked my way along so I've got more voil up at the top and then we have the gate prompt underneath. So we've had wildflowers, we have the gate. Um, I've then moved along, there's more lace. And then the garden prompts, that was where uh, the voil started with mine. I'd done a section um, just to add more colour and more texture and I didn't know we were going to have a garden prompt but that sitted sit, yeah it sat in there perfectly get your words out girl <laughs> so um I've carried that over uh we had the greenhouse prompt um and then we had the flower pots which I haven't finished this side yet because I had to add on my other piece to extend it so that I'll go back and work on that again so what I want to do is um she says looking for a scissors okay you see these will do I'm going to trim off this piece I'm just going to snip it off I'm not going to bin it because that will fit perfect in fact actually I might flick it around and it might go up there and hide the join at the top so I'll pop that to one side we'll get rid of some of these the fluffier bits because that's the only thing with voile um you do get lots of fluffy bits and pieces so what i want to do let's move it along a little bit further is just to add a little more of the pink bring it down a little more of the green maybe a little bit more lilac and just take it a, a little bit further down just to bring that kind of like i don't know a hill maybe so this is my color palette that i've been using there's a mixture I've collected over the years of small bits and pieces. I used to make corsages, flowers, different things. I've always played with fabric. Um, so I've got a real good mixture. I've got some real hot, limey greens, bright pink, and that's got um, a gorgeous sheen to it. It's ever so soft. Uh, this one that you probably can't see, that's a scrunchy top, you might be able to see it now, is a very pale sort of grey that's what i used uh for the greenhouse windows so i'll pop that to one side I'm not going to use that then i've got some of the green I'll show you a bigger piece which we are going to be using uh some of the lilac which i want to bring a little bit more lilac in here and then the other two pieces i've picked up i haven't used yet but they do fit in with my color scheme and this is actually a little piece of lining fabric so that's quite inexpensive and if you're recycling garments to create your, your work from um don't discard the lining you know you can use everything that's on there so pop that to one side and then there's this piece as well 
Uh, you see that was stitched into a tube ready to make a flower. You know, you twist, twist round and round and round and you come out with a flower. Anyway, <laughs> so um, what I'm going to start with, I'm just working on um, my felt mat and I'm going to just cut myself a little strip of fabric. I don't want too much. Oh, it's a slippy little thing. Come on. There we go. Okay, just want a small piece of that. And then we'll move that snake of fabric out of the way. And then what I tend to do is I'll just fold it in half. Um, if you fold it in half, you can get more intensity of colour. If you just use the one layer, it's, it's not quite as much. And also with this one, you've got the sheen on one side and it's quite matte on the other. So I'm going to fold it and I am going to tuck it underneath so that all the... Um, everything's going to the right on top, the directions. And I'm just going to... Oh, come on, pin. Thank you. I'm just going to pin it in. Okay. And I think I'm going to move it so it's going to come down here a little bit. So I'm just grabbing it. Nothing fancy. And I'm going to pop another pin in there. Okay. And I'm going to take it a little bit further down. And I'm going to pinch it together so that it tapers off and I'm going to pop another pin in there. I'm going to snip these little ends off and get rid of, crikey that molts. I've already been over this project once this morning to get rid of all the fluff. This batik is gorgeous but look at all that, holy moly, it picks up fluff like you wouldn't believe. So I'm going to grab hold of, we'll have a little bit of the lilac on there. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not bothered about the edge on this one. I'm going to, in fact, we'll, we'll fold it. That will make it easier to handle. I'm just going to snip a piece of that off. Okay. And I can always come back for a little bit more if I want some more. And I'm going to fold that in again. And I'm going to tuck it underneath and I'm going to put a pin in there to hold it and then I'm not wrestling and I'm just going to do the same thing again. Oop, you don't want to go down, do you? Let's pop another pin down there just for now. And I'm going to basically do a similar thing again. I'm going to take it down. I'm going to take that pin out, put the pin through the two together. And then this part, I'm just going to fold it so that we get kind of, not a pleat, but we get some, some movement in it. And then we're going to add some green over the top. I love this green. It's such a nice colour. And this will be popping in patches. Oh, let's do the same again. It was so much easier. Come on. This is Saturday morning brain. Not woken up yet. <laughs> and then I am going to fold that. And lift this side up. Pop that underneath. Not bothered about any long bits sticking out there because we can sort that out. I'll move that pin further down so it's got everything in there. And again, I'm just going to create little, uh, little hills, little furrows, I to call them. I'm going to fold that over because there's a lot of fabric in there. I'm going to put another pin down there and then as I stitch uh, what it's going to do is it, it's going to ruche up um, and 
that's when you start to get the texture on the other side where it's kind of where I've stitched it it's just pulled it slightly in different directions and you can manipulate the fabric as well if you don't like where it's going if you, if you want a little dip here just move your fabric down you want to pinch these two together put a little stitch in there um, but basically by doing it this way you can kind of work out um, where you where it looks nice whether you like it in that position whether you want to move it um whether you want less pink more green whatever so i tend to pin things into the board um with this being totally un you know it's got a life of its own this stuff it just goes where it wants to when i'm happy i will then carefully um put the pins through the fabric um so they're coming out of the um pad the felt pad and they're now going through the the roll so that i will be able to pick it up and to sew it so i'll just work my way around and do that stitch this down and then i'll come back and show you what happens with the lace okie dokie bye okie dokie so all i've done is i've just put some tiny holding stitches down at this end just so that i can take all the hundreds of pins out that i had holding it together um so i'm just going to pop oh here we go fastened around the pins holy moly right um so i'm going to go back underneath and i'm just going to move the fabric down slightly and then come up from the back my thread's probably way too long, but I hate having to put more thread in. Um, and I'm just going to manipulate it. If I want the fabric going down a little bit more there, I'll just hold it. Oop. Stitch through. I'm not bothered that you can see my stitches because obviously we're going to carry on working um, on top of this fabric. This is just in the background. So I just wanted you to see how, I hope you can still see how I'm doing it. Get down to here and it's nothing fancy, just tiny little holding stitch. This fabric wants to grab everything. So getting down here, I'm going on to the next layer. So that's the, the lavender shade. And let's come up there. And I've wriggled that too much up there. Okay. more little stitches and I can move some of these annoying pins out of the way. I quite like that fold so I'm going to keep that fold there. And you don't want to be going over every single inch of it, you just want to be holding down sections just to keep it in place. Oop, oh, that's a bigger stitch. Oh, come on, don't not. Oy, oy, oy. Always does this when you film it, doesn't it? There we go, I think. Come on. All the way through, thank you. down into that and then into the green and you see how the fabric's now starting to ruche up let's move those out of the way so it's got a little bit of movement behind it so i can manipulate this if i want this higher or if i want to tuck that in move that bit down a I think I might do actually. Let's see how we go. We'll finish this bit off. That's 
I like the way that that's lifting because if we sew up on top of that, there'll be some nice dimension with it. In fact, I'm going to keep that up there and then we can probably add some lace or something underneath at the bottom. Hope everybody's doing well. I've managed to keep watching everybody's um, YouTubes. I've, I've kept up with everybody's stitching, but I haven't, and I do apologise. I haven't been and commented yet because I haven't been upstairs very much. Um, I've had three lots of treatment from the chiropractor, three days apart, so it's quite intense. And yeah wasn't allowed to do anything still not allowed to exercise or lift anything but I'm comfortable to sit at my desk again so while I've been out of action my husband's built me a new shelf at the back of my desk um, and I've got lights on this as well so I can see now properly to sew okay I'm going to call that quits there and guess what? I've not put my lights on. <laughs> oh, oh, you can see. Oh, okie doke. Let's just finish that off and then you can see it completed. Oh, I hope you can see this without the lights. Bear with. Let's just pop one on here. Oops. I do apologise. Totally out of practice. That's terrible. A couple of days off and it all goes to pot. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, where's the end gone? So the other thing that I've been doing, I was I decided I was going to do this year, was to learn to cross stitch on linen. So that's what I've been doing the last week or so. Sat in an armchair, bolt upright. I have been learning to stitch on linen. So I'll show you in a minute where I've got to. Really enjoying it. Rediscovered cross stitch in a big way. Um, there are some amazing uh, new designers out there um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying learning something different. I've cross-stitched on Ada since I was a little girl. In fact, I'm working on one at the moment, finishing it off that's been on the go for probably about 15, more than 15 years. But I am determined it will be finished this year. Okay. Right, I want to get rid of these pins. I know that's going to be pretty flat there. Oh no, don't not. Come on. You're going too fast. Cotton thread on these nylon fibres, these man-made fibres. Surprised I'm not getting electric shocks. Okay. So that's ruched up a little bit there. I hope you can see this. I'm going to pop up there where it's ruched. And I am going to also... Oop, ow! <laughs> uh, you see, you cross-stitch. Nice round end to the needle. You don't get pricked as much. Slow stitching, uh huh. Pointy end hurts. Okay, let's just work our way down here again. And it will be like spaghetti junction on the back now. Let's work our way to here. Oh, thread. What are you doing to me? 
I'm going to bunch this up a little bit because I don't want that going over the edge. So I'll create another little bulb there. There we go. One more stitch down this end just to hold that. And tie it off behind. Okay, okay, so I can take these two pins out now and you can see that that carries on. I'm going to um, try out some different laces over the top and get, hide some of the bits and pieces. This will all get covered up with something. Um, the next prompt is out now and that is uh, a garden visitor. So what i'm thinking is having a bird of some kind so i'm going to go on the hunt for something so a bird could go here um and that would hide something will disguise this and then i will root through i have a myriad of different fabrics these are just a few of the ones that i used further down so i've got a piece of um neck curtain a scrap of neck curtain lace um a doily that has been chopped into many times um beautiful doily so much work around the edge of that one um i've got some old thick lace that my friend sent me that i've actually used on this project so i might add some more of that in there's another piece of foil um that's got patterning in it some scraps of um gosh all different all different fabrics in here there's more neck curtains fancy neck curtains a bit more doily so I've got lots of bits and pieces to go at. This was a great one. It's a um, kind of like a kaffee rod style net. Um, you know, quite a deep ornate one. But it's great because you've all these different textures in there to snip out. You know, that's that part there is, is that. But I was thinking, you know, it could look like a fountain or a tree. Um, so I might add that in somewhere. Haven't used these. These were in a little mixed up bag of all sorts from Abacan. And the lace collars, but they could be cobblestone path, was what I was wondering. Uh, muslin. Uh, a little bit more of an old tablecloth. Um, yeah, so plenty of things. And the, the new laces. Um, so I have a mixture of different laces in here. Got my floral lace. Um, yeah they're all squished in there so i'll have a dive in there and see what i can find um and so what i was doing i'll show you my cross stitch because i'm feeling very proud of my cross stitch the the first one i did i did a little um i think it's heart in hand Celia turner um and it's a little cross stitch on 28 count linen um, and you had a piece of lace on totally went wrong but I finished it so I don't know what I'm going to add it into but I was thinking learning this I might do something to add on to the snippet roll that I've stitched with cross stitch on linen the other thing I did was a little um, pin cushion and I've got my initials on the back my royal initials uh, and a B for Brenda, my mum, because she was the avid stitcher. Amazing, amazing stitcher. Fabulous work. When I get her things back out, I will share some of them. I can, I can talk about them now without bursting into tears, which is good. Um, and I made a little what bow. And these were from kits um, from... Oh, Jane Greenoff designs them. I joined the um, Cross Stitch Guild. So you can find all the kits and things on there. And at the moment I'm working on what's meant to be a pin cushion, but it's actually like a mini sampler. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm working on at the moment. So I'm feeling very proud of that. Not perfect, but finished and I made it. So I'm feeling quite chuffed with myself. So 
Um, sorry for waffling. Sorry for the lack of light as well. I'll get back to it. So I'm off to hunt for birds, inspiration with birds um, to keep in the colour scheme. And I will clear my desk and spread the lace out and decide what I'm going to add where on here. Fill in a few more gaps in the background. Um, and I will see you soon. I'm back up and about. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. Bye.